Welcome to another episode of the Gamecast Newscast. I am Snowy, otherwise known as Count Fracula, and with me as always is my two co-hosts. We have Max and Mole. Hey, how's it going, guys? Why are you always so happy? How do you even manage that? <laughs> Believe me, I'm dead on the inside. <laughs> okay. We're all dead on the inside. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just a, just a cheerful facade. Okay, exactly. That's fine. And my other <laughs> co-host, The Voice 106.7, otherwise known as Vox. Oh, sure. You always introduce Max first. You never introduce me first. Yeah, I see who's the favorite here. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Vox, you did say I was your favorite on Twitter the other day, so. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. is true. Not gonna so, lie. You know, my petty revenge. <laughs> so petty. Indeed. And joining us this week is somebody who is not part of the Gamecast crew, but is part of the crew from our sort of partner site, the team that we're sort of incestuously involved with, mm. uh, Earlier Access right. Gaming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I worded it that way. <laughs> and <laughs> one of the writers for the site and does video reviews and whatever, he's called Dave. Say hello, Dave. Hey, I'm a Dave. Just like just like everyone else is a Dave, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly an intro, thank you. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Was not prepared for that. <laughs> right. Okay, let's get started. So we all know how Australia are living in the 1970s, both in terms of their technology and their viewpoints regarding video games. And that was made very clear a few years ago when South Park The Stick of Truth was released over there, but had to have several sort of cuts made to it in terms of content and was replaced in a rather stupid manner with a crying panda and a description of of what happened during those scenes. <laughs> Which is Personally, strange. I think that's genius. I, yeah, think, I think that's, that's pretty genius. freaking hilarious. It's quite yeah. weird, let's be honest. No, it's very weird, but it's funny. I mean, I mean, Australia is the place where fun and happiness goes to die, so the fact that they did that as a sort of, you know, ironic twist, perhaps, just makes it all the more hilarious. Remember the person who made this thing is Australian. Oh yeah, no, definitely, definitely. He can oh. fire us at any point. <laughs> <laughs> right, I forgot. Sully, if you're listening, I love you. So yeah, the, the Stick of Truth was released with a lot of sort of censorship and edits just to make sure that it actually got released in Australia. And... In what might be a sign of Australia actually growing up, uh, South Park, the Fractured But Whole, which is quite a funny name, will be getting an R18 Plus release in Australia, but will have no cuts at all. I don't know, do you think that means that it's not as bad as the first one in terms of vulgarity, or do you think they hit it better or what? That's pretty freaking weird, in my opinion. Because I would imagine the second the one's just going to be a lot worse. Hole. It's not. It can't be <laughs> better. <laughs> Surely. I mean, true, true, true. But I'm just. I'd be very surprised because they even it even says in the article that Outlast Two was uh, denied earlier this year, and I played that game, and I don't think it was that like grotesque and surreal compared to a lot of like it was still pretty out there, but I don't think anything in there is worse than anything in a South Park game. You know what I mean? We must remember, Australia seems to be governed by a bunch of crotchety old men who think that the very idea of video games is somehow corrupting the children, even <laughs> though there's a reason that rating systems exist. <laughs> well, I mean, let's be honest, rating systems don't really do much nowadays. No, oh, they no, don't, no, because no. parents are stupid <laughs> enough to buy 18-rated games for their children and then fucking exactly. complain about it. It's like, ah, there's loads of killing in this Call of Duty game. I bought it for my nine-year-old. What the <laughs> fuck are you expecting? 
I think we can all agree that uh, Count does a wonderful crotchety old lady. Oh, I think well, this has been yes. known. Oh, if, yeah. if she buys me dinner first, then yes. <laughs> okay, then I'm leaving. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Yeah, the the whole thing about Outlast Two, I don't know. It makes it sort of like, are they growing up? But at the same time, a senator in the Australian government told it, like, made a statement and literally just said, "quote Leave gamers alone." Wait um, for this one. But, uh, for out- and it was in the wake yeah. of Outlast Two. Oh, okay. Because they oh, were yeah, just like, because he was just like, "This is getting silly." Yeah, because it's pretty ridiculous. It, like the amount of game, like, was, what was it? Hotline Miami, or was it Hotline Miami Two? One of them was just completely like, "No, you can't release that." Ah. <laughs> I, I really, <laughs> you can't do-, do it. I don't get it. the thing is, like. Was Resident Evil 7 released in Australia with no cuts? If it was, then that shows a complete lack of any sort of understanding on the the part of... Nope, it's um, released in Australia. Yeah, Yeah, it doesn't look like uh, it got censored. And if if I remember correctly, in Resident Evil 7, there is a point where you find the beheaded corpse of a policeman friend that you made. And you have to plunge yes. your fist down the guy's throat while his like decapitated corpse is quivering, and then um. you pull out a key. <laughs> That's yes, apparently that correct. fine, but <laughs> some of the stuff in South Park, the Stick of Truth, wasn't. And some of the stuff in Outlast 2 wasn't. See, that's my thing. Outlast 2 is basically a bunch of stuff like that. Not even as grotesque as that. That sounds worse than anything in Outlast 2. (laughs) Exactly. That's what I mean. It's like Resident (laughs) Evil 7 is, by all accounts, a horrifying game. And yet that was released with no cuts. But Outlast 2 was denied release. South Park Stick of Truth had to be edited. Hotline Miami 2 was denied a release. I don't understand Australia's government. I think it's the fact that some of these games, for example, Outlast and Resident Evil, border more on the realistic side. I mean, you look at their graphics. They tr- they border more on realism. While um, while Fractured But Whole, I mean, the, the South Park series and even the Hotline Miami one looks a little cartoonish. So maybe it's something to do with kids seeing this game and being like oh it's a cartoon this is okay let's stick sticks up people's asses <laughs> that type of stuff <laughs> i guess yeah that's interesting too because um outlast 2 and resident evil 7 they kind of have a reason like they're still trying to tell a horrific story and stuff and they kind of have reasoning behind what is going on there whereas south park seems to be offensive just for the sake of being offensive at times or at least it can come off that way but I guess that still doesn't really explain why Outlast 2 was banned there and not South Park. Like, maybe that is, maybe that could be a case for them growing up in this case. Or maybe they really are just leaving gamers alone in this case. You know what I mean? Yeah, or maybe they're just wildly inconsistent old men. Maybe they've got, like, dementia or something and they just keep forgetting <laughs> that, that they hate games. Well, one of the we other let, reasons... Are we allowed that? Are we allowed okay. that? <laughs> uh, one of one of the other reasons Outlast Two might have not gotten a rating is I I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Australia still very much I don't know steeped in religious stuff? And Outlast Two had a lot of religious That's true. undertones. So I have no clue how deep in religion Australia is. Yeah, I mean, Outlast Two is know, very religious. It is. It's it's very religious. Oh dear. Right. So, is any any other opinions on Outlast Two and its whole shtick of truth? Not in particular. No. Hey, let's see what you did there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know you did. I know you liked it. Sorry, Hillary just dab. So, Game of Thrones. Bethesda might be making a Game of Thrones game, as leaked by Target. It might not be a game. We're not sure. It. It's some sort of project, but let's be honest, there was no accident. Well, it could just be a project. (laughs) I know, that's mostly what they make. I know, but you never know. You never know. You know, but, um... (laughs) Bethesda gone into graphic novels all of a sudden. (laughs) (laughs) Um, 
<clears throat> but there's no accident that the words Bethesda and Game of Thrones got put together in the same like section. You know, that's not an accident at all. The only accident here was allowing that to be revealed early. So there's yes. I there's definitely something here. It's sort of like the other week when um, when the Destiny Silver got published on Steam on the Steam yes. store. As in, uh, exactly. Yeah. That's what that's what exactly what this reminds me of except it's just based in a failing retail store in America instead. Is Target <laughs> failing? Boy. <laughs> I don't know. I just don't like Target the few times I've ever been in there. <laughs> So yes, Bethesda Game of Thrones was a landing page title of a thing on the Target website that was listed not too long ago, a couple of like a day or two ago as we're talking. Yeah. And has it been removed? That's a good question. Let's hmm. click right now. I well, have no look. clue. Let's let's have a look. Target official website. Um, um, oh wait, I don't yep. think this was a link to it though. No, it's not. Nah, it's just the link to Target. Yeah. Which, by the way, they have a sales on Star Wars stuff. Woo. <laughs> wait, why don't they have... Most of the articles on this had a link to it. What the hell? Maybe the page is gone now and they've given up. Well, I mean, so. it's really easy to to archive a page. Mm, I don't know yeah, why they yeah. didn't do it. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Go well, regardless... Away, Target. I don't want to be on you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, regardless, I think this is interesting because, yeah, Bethesda can nail open worlds, but their writing has always been pretty weak, and that's probably the strongest thing in Game of Thrones is the writing. So they what? need to are you really. Saying, are you saying the people who came up with "I used to be an adventurer, then I took an arrow to the knee" <laughs> can't write very well? Hey, hey, hey. Well, that's actually, actually making that assumption from <laughs> that is actually based in lore. I'll have you know. Is it now? What do you mean it's based yes. in lore? It is an actual thing. Uh, a lot, a long time ago, uh, in the age of the Viking, uh, whenever they said that they would, took an arrow to the knee, that means that they got married. What? Yes, I used to be an adventurer like you, but then I took an arrow to the knee. I used to be an adventurer married. like you, but then I got fucking married. Yes, that's why they're stuck on guard duty all the time. Wow. Oh, dear. Yes. Um, <laughs> so so that, that's the thing. But still, yeah, Bethesda don't have the best record for writing quality. Let's let's put. I'm gonna. I'll put it politely. I don't know. Maybe this will be the first Bethesda game where everything is good, and it won't be buggy. Just kidding. That'll always happen. Uh, let's let's go to our guest, Dave. What do you? What would you expect of a Bethesda-made Game of Thrones title? Well, to be honest, I really haven't seen the show. <laughs> I've been trying to get into it, but I just haven't really had the time for it. Um, but I am familiar with Bethesda's work. They did a, They did an amazing job on open world titles. But um, knowing a little bit of Game of Thrones, I think they. They they'll nail the um the open world like they did with Elder Scrolls, but I'm not so sh like you were saying about the writing. I'm not so sure about the writing. Yes, I agree because the writing in Game of Thrones is one of its strong points because it's based on a very well written series of books. I mean, I don't know. I have to maybe slightly disagree in terms of of Bethesda not being good at writing. Because, I mean, come on. Skyrim had the Lusty Argonian Maid. That was an amazing book. <laughs> they had what, sorry? The Lusty Argonian Maid count. Bless Tell you. me you haven't read it before. I, I have Bless. not. You need to. You must. The lust... Oh, I'm, I'm not typing this in in a normal window. This is going in an incognito window. <laughs> lusty he doesn't want that in his browser history. Argonian Maid. Do I want to know? Do I actually yes. want to read oh, it? You yes, do. you do. Yeah, is it? It's not a fan fiction, is it? It's literally. No, this is oh, in the no, game. No, no, no. It's it's actual lore in the game. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm but a poor Argonian maid. <laughs> oh, I love this is Max's like, this is, freaking giggles. This is worse <laughs> writing the game of fucking Thrones. Not Game of Thrones. Fifty Shades of Grey, that's what I was thinking of. 
My goodness, that's quite a loaf, but however shall it fit in my oven? <laughs> <laughs> the next line, though. This loaf isn't ready for baking, my sweet. It has yet to rise. <laughs> no, oh, God, this is brilliant. Oh, no, I, I just... Oh. But, uh, yes, Game of Thrones might have a Bethesda game. It's all rumours. Nothing solid apart from the fact that Target put a landing page on, which means that something is more than likely happening. Although, in the world of AAA games, this kind of balls up means it might now not happen. So, yay. I don't think this would make it not happen. <laughs> I don't know. I think AAA publishers are petty enough to let that me- make it not happen. I mean, I agree that stuff does happen, but I think in this case it'll be different because Bethesda, stuff leaks from Bethesda all the fucking time, and they kind of just do whatever anyways. And also keep in mind, they have, what, like four or five projects that are unannounced that they've been working on for a while, so chances are very high this is one of them. And if it's a Game of Thrones game, even if it leaks, they're not going to not do that. That's going to make so much money. Yes, although I will say there was a Game of Thrones game launched on the PlayStation 3 in yeah, 2012. I yeah, that one. That yeah. had a critical <laughs> paddling. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, there might be a Game of Thrones game coming. We don't know when, we don't know how, but it will be coming probably from Bethesda, probably, maybe. We'll see. Maybe. Perhaps. My goodness, that's quite a loaf, but however shall it fit in my oven? Nintendo's Miiverse is finally shutting down. Gas. What do you mean, finally? That Gas. sucks. <laughs> Does it? Did you post Does stuff it? on Miiverse? This Max level Mold, was a... great. No, I no, love but it's so, lava. It's so, no. Fuck off. It's so much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are games that, like, won't work because of it. Yes, I, yes. As much as I don't really care for Miiverse, there are actually some games that will be affected by the closure of Miiverse and like in, in significant ways. One of which is, I think, Donkey Kong. And yes. there, there's a Donkey Kong game that you will now technically not be able to complete and unlock game modes because of the Miiverse shutting down. That's a bit shit, and I... Well, I say I hope Nintendo patches it to change it, but it's Nintendo. They're not going to do that. Yeah, no. It's it's Nintendo. Once they put their mind to something, whether it be negative or positive, usually negative, uh, yeah, no, they they stick to exactly. it, regrettably. They're not good at patching either. They, they never got into the whole patching thing, because... I'll take the example of Pokemon X and Y, which, when the 3D is on, still lags to balls. <laughs> uh, runs at 20 frames a that. second it's very noticeable Miiverse is very intricately tied to the Wii U and 3DS systems which I mean shutting down something like that I do agree it's going to have really really bad repercussions among a lot of the fan base especially if what you say is true count that there are certain levels that won't be able to be completed for this Donkey Kong game yeah no very much a dick move because now you're essentially locking players out of content that they paid for exactly it makes it makes more sense if it's literally just a business decision because nobody uses the service anymore and like they don't do anything gameplay wise it's literally just for the i love lava messages but um it's not there is genuine re- like there's genuine features of certain games that you can't that you won't be able to access anymore which is a bit shit and yeah, I don't like that. The official shutdown is supposed to be happening worldwide on all platforms, November the tenth, ten p.m. Pacific time. If you want That's to be, soon. yes, it is also one a.m. Eastern time, six a.m. BST. Even though we don't operate on BST in that time because we've already had the clocks go back, so we're back on GMT. Well done, whoever wrote that article. <laughs> I think this is because they're still trying to push everyone to the Switch. Yes, I agree. And I don't blame them because the Switch is a much better platform. Realistically. I have one now. Yes. Although, uh, we must remember that Nintendo will start charging for their online service next year. 
Yes. She's a dick Which, move. I mean, I let, it's, it, is, it is a dick move, but it's not at the same time. If we you're going to gonna tell me that e- it's only $4 a month and that makes it fine, you're wrong. <laughs> Here's the thing. Xbox has been doing that for how many years? But what, that doesn't make it better. I mean, they're just following a business model that's already pre-established. Yeah, but everyone yes, hates that business model. Everyone hates Xbox Live for that reason. I feel like people have gotten used to it. I don't even know yeah. if hates is even... A, you can't even say hates I anymore. hate it. I, don't, I refuse to get Xbox Live. You or... you refuse <laughs> to get it. <laughs> yes. Which I, I don't this, disagree you with sound. necessarily. <laughs> exactly. And this is how the news team terrible. falls apart. <laughs> I don't want Xbox Live. I don't want to have to pay more to access online services when I'm already paying for the fucking internet to do so. Because I can do it on my PC for fucking free. Dave, you're witnessing the uh, the fall of the news team. I remember a couple years ago when Nintendo was, you know, nobody really... I mean, people cared for them, but they weren't, like, you know... um to the point where it was like Xbox versus Nintendo, Xbox, uh, Nintendo versus Sony, and you know, all this other stuff. And a lot of people were wanting Nintendo to catch up with what Sony and X and Microsoft were doing with their systems. And now that they've done it, people are saying, no, 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 don't do this. <laughs> no, so I find it funny. <laughs> the thing is, we're not saying don't do it. We're just saying don't do it in the what, like, don't make the same mistakes that they made. Like, have an online service. Great. That's a really good idea. However, yes. the things they've done different are terrible. The headset thing. And the things they've done the same, the paying thing, are annoying. <laughs> like, they've picked the sort of not the... They pick not the worst elements, but by no means the best elements of online gaming. And put them all together. I just feel like, to a degree, Nintendo's the only one that needs the money when it comes to an online service. Like, oh, yeah. maybe this will what? actually be used to improve it. Nintendo could hemorrhage money for 50 <laughs> years and not go out of business. Not that Nintendo Damn needs money, triggered. per se. But that they can use this money to like focus exclusively on the online online service and maybe build up an actual infrastructure. Whereas Sony and Microsoft, I don't know where the fuck that money is going anymore. Oh, to be fair, yes, Sony's online system is just atrocious. Like the PSN downloads, you were downloading at about 10 kilobytes a second sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I I saw so, I saw somebody's download speed. Like it said it was going to take about four days or something, like re- something really long, like ten days to install. I think it's the latest WWE game, and I ended up working it out, and they were downloading it somewhere like about ten kilobytes a second. Wow! 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 Yeah. Wow, wow! Wow! And the guy was on gigabit internet as well. So let, let's let's say that Meverse was a good thing. We'll lie. And um, does anybody <laughs> have any? positive memories of Miiverse that they'd like to share with the group. I mean, there Uh, were a few times when, like, I'd be playing Smash and just randomly, on the specific stage for, like, uh, Miiverse, like, people say things when they win and it gets submitted to it. And, like, straight up, it would just say cunt just in the background. (laughs) That was always kind of funny. Just, like, you'd be playing and it's just, like, cunt in all caps for no reason. (laughs) Nice. Yeah. Uh, that's that's one thing that's going to be affected. In Smash Bros, you will no longer be able to share maps. Yeah, at all. see stuff like that. Yeah, that's quite a fun yeah. feature. In the... Nope, not anymore. <laughs> Fuck you, people who enjoy doing that, because that's not happening anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not good. I, I'm never a fan of people getting rid of things that will actually like take features out of a game. Like, even if it's just a byproduct of something else. I'm not a fan of features being removed from a game unless they were received poorly. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's like the whole thing about SimCity, the always online thing with that. That got removed because it was received awfully, rightly so. But, you know, things like this, where they're removing the ability to complete the game in some respects, is not a good idea. 
I don't know. That's my, that might just be me. I just don't. I don't think that this is being handled very well. Seems to be Nintendo's well. mo, really, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it, I, I'm not sure. Well, we all know Nintendo. Um, when they shut down something, they're shutting it down to bring in something new and better. So. I'm not sure if they're trying to make, like, a network between the Switch and the 3DS, like they did with Miiverse, between the Wii U and the 3DS. Doubt it, because I always thought, I think the Switch is a sort of, it's mostly marketed as a replacement for both the Wii U and the 3DS. Yep, it's, well, they're they're trying to keep that, like, kind of a secret. They straight up said they're not doing that, but, like, that's exactly yeah, what they're, they're doing. They said um, they're not doing that. <laughs> But exactly if you've got any doing. sort of ounce of common sense, you will see that that is quite clearly what they're doing. Well, here's my positive memory of uh, Miiverse, and you'll see I'm posting an image on the news team. Dave can't see that. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'll DM it to well, him. Well, I mean, yeah, DM it to him, but it, th- this is my positive memory. Just witnessing that. <laughs> Take it in. Take in the glory. That is pretty great. Does that mean in the, like you won't be able to do the drawings in the original Splatoon anymore? Nope. Ooh. You won't be able to. Aww. Yeah, yeah see? That no, sucks. this kind of sucks. Aww. Yeah. Now, now, now that we're talking about Splatoon, oh, yes, that definitely sucks. But I wanted to tell people I was a kid now and a squid now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a squid kid. <laughs> Uh, I want to do it. But we've, we've already done it. You're a kid now. You're a squid now. Musical transitions. So I don't, don't want to yeah, feel right. like we're repeating ourselves already. We barely had any yet. What's going on? We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of Oz. Looks like Microsoft is going to be uh, venturing. Well, I mean, it already has, but is going to be venturing further into the VR market uh, soon. Hopefully, maybe, perhaps we may have a headset that is able to compete with the Oculus Rift and the HTC Vive. Let's just hope it's not run by Cortana, because if it is, she will probably try to kill us. Plus, <laughs> she's just not as good as Siri. Have I you tried use using Cortana? Either of them. I, I have. I mean, I have Siri isn't the best and... either, but... They're it's... both pretty terrible, which is why I don't use them, and I just type what I want to know. I'm still waiting for an appropriate AI. Then again, the day an appropriate AI comes out, we're all doomed. Yeah, I was about to say. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I don't know. I think they're already there. They're just not out to the public, to be honest with you. Maybe. Well, you have no proof of that, to be fair. That's been quite wild speculation. I'm afraid I can't let you do that voice. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Count is an AI. A really bad one, but he's an AI. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, my red eye has given me away. Except this isn't VR. You're right. It's not completely VR. It is mixed reality, which I'm thinking it's going to be a form of ARG rather than VR. I think what they're aiming for is you can flip between the two. I mean, personally, the thought of having an actual heads up display in my day to day life is actually pretty awesome. Yes, but if you've looked at the headset, you're going to look like a twat while you're wearing it. Yeah. If if you're looking for just a heads up display. (laughs) I will look like a fashionable twat. <laughs> that sure. word never sounds correct coming out of an coming in an American accent. It just twat. doesn't. So yeah, they're going for a mixed reality thing, which is basically you can have VR games and you can have ARG type games, augmented reality. And we know that VR headsets are let's say cost restrictive. A little bit, although that has changed very recently, as we discussed last week. Um, These headsets are going to become... Well, this is a whole sort of... Microsoft are working with loads of different hardware manufacturers to make these kinds of things. And what they their marketing spiel was that they are going to democratise virtual reality this holiday, this Christmas, Mm. for sensible people. And they're saying that headset and motion controller bundles will start from as low as four hundred dollars, which is about two hundred and no three hundred and sixty pounds. Although considering the way tech's priced, it will also be four hundred pounds. Sigh. 
the the only thing about Microsoft doing this is that I can see this going one of two ways. Because they are coming late into the game, their soft their hardware might actually be more advanced than the HTC Vive and the Oculus combined, or the other route they can take is they're going to screw it up royally. The thing is, it could end up like that, but the fact is it's being done by loads of different manufacturers. So HP are coming up with one, and Lenovo are coming up with one, and so are Dell, and so are Acer. And yeah. where did that yes come from? Also, this is a plug-and-play. Is it? Yes, it's a plug-and-play. Oh, wow. So you can bring okay. it around with you. Hmm. Cool. Well, actually, that... Well, well here's, I said cool. here's another... <laughs> yeah, it is cool, but here's another question. Okay, so it's not a full VR headset. It's mixed reality. So is it not going to need all that... Um, you know how the HTC has those little cubes that track your movement? Is it going to be yes, like that? Yes, this is one of the things that they were talking about. When like I'm I'm reading the Windows press statement, they they're talking about how they have a cumbersome setup procedure and all this kind of stuff. That's so they're saying the Windows mixed reality headsets coming this holiday will be first to deliver VR experiences with built-in sensors to track your physical position without requiring you to purchase and install external sensors in your room. You don't need to spend hours to set up a single room in your house with a large play space. Just plug and play. It also means these experiences are portable. Uh, whether you're traveling f for work or visiting friends and family, just pack your PC and headset and you can share the magic of mixed reality. So you do still need a PC. Yes. So that means it's still going to be a slight pain for me because of the way my house is laid out. But Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Well, uh, there are, I mean, there, there. I think they did, I don't know if, sure if it was Oculus that came out with a system that was completely portable. It was like this backpack thing that had the PC built into the backpack. And so ooh, a lot of the... Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, a lot of the, it was. It did come out, but I just, I'm not sure it was successful. Mm. So maybe Microsoft could be hinting at something similar. They could do that in the future, the, but I don't think that's what they're aiming for right now. Yeah, I mean, I, personally, if they did this in the future and you had a true VR slash AR experience, that that could cause some waves. That would be that interesting. Could. I do think that because of the way that things like laptops are getting better and better, I think in sort of five years' time, a mid-range laptop will be able to run VR games semi-decently. So that means... In a few years' time, VR will be very, very portable indeed, especially with these sort of, like, the way these sensors are apparently going. Definitely. I think that's the goal. But Dave, well, how do you feel about this? I mean, what, how do you feel about VR technology in general? Um, I feel that it's, to me, it's a little, it's a little ahead of its time. That's what I feel. Interesting. Also, like, you think... Through do you, do you think we're going too fast, or...? I feel like we are progressing too fast for virtual reality. Because, yes, it's, it's cool and all, but I'd rather much have a virtual reality headset that can track my movement and, you know, track the surroundings around me to, come, to transform this world into an augmented reality ro world. You mean kind of mm. like what the Kinect was supposed to do? Like a blend between Some, the Kinect like and a that, VR headset? But yeah, I just, I don't, I'm, I'm weird about VR. I like it, but I feel it's, a, it's, we're working for something that's way ahead of our time. Interesting. Okay. That is, okay, yeah, that's a good, that's an interesting point of view. Um, Max, how about you? How do you feel about all this? I mean, I think VR is great. I think that we're actually in a pretty good time for it. I was just, I remember just being, I was thinking that before the headsets launched, but then I remember when like the Oculus launched and the Vive launched and everything and everyone was just kind of like, holy shit, like it, it's here. There's no software yet, but it's like happening. It's, it, it, it's working and it's not bad. Like what the hell? You know what I mean? Um <clears throat> So since then, I've only gotten to try VR like a couple of times and they were very like mundane projects and games. Like I haven't even gotten to try like Resident Evil 7 or anything, even though I know that's not like much of a VR experience. It's more something you watch while playing. But 
I think that the issue isn't necessarily that we're too far ahead. It's that the technology is so expensive right now. So right now it's really for enthusiasts and everything like that. And then we are starting to get to a point with like the HTC Vive price cut last week. And then now this seems to be another step in that direction where it's starting to become consumer level. But when it comes to mixed reality, I'm still not 100% sure what this like, is. Like, so l- let me let me actually interject for a second. Yeah. So when you when I when we talk about mixed reality, have you heard of a software, a company called uh, Magic Leap? I have not. So uh, Im- this company, imagine imagine you're in your office, um, you're just working and you need to either deal with something that involves 3D handling. What you do is you plop on your headset and it's actually more of a visor than an actual like, you know how the Oculus and the Vive completely obscure your eyes. With the Magic Leap technology, it's a visor that just goes over your eyes and acts as a sort of crystal display where you see things overlaid on top of your eyes. So like Google Glass, basically. Kind of like Google Glass, not as dorky and a lot more advanced. Yeah, okay. And and so uh, what Magic Leap intends on doing (laughs) is you will be able to handle 3D items using your bare hands without any additional sensors using only the built-in sensors of the visor that's going to be released at some point. Okay. Um, there's, yeah, there's a lot of um, uh, work-in-progress videos on their site, but frankly, it's very impressive, and I think that that might actually be the future of VR, honestly. I think it's that's more... That's what this article says. We sh- yeah, we should be heading down augmented reality rather than just a completely virtual world. You can overlay stuff on top of the existing one. So this headset can only do the mixed reality, correct? You can't do like both. Uh, you can. Do which both. one? The Microsoft one? Yeah, and the Microsoft. The one. Microsoft one you can. I know you can because they have confirmed that existing Steam VR games will work, or at least some of them will work on these headsets. Yeah, if you actually look at the photos, you can see that there are. That that is lined with cameras on the outside, but it also obscures your eyes. So it should be capable of both. Yes, what I'm thinking, those cameras are the motion sensors to tell you where you're going, but they can also be used for the AR stuff. I suspect that it's more likely that they'll be used for the motion sensors more than the other stuff. Although, I mean, if if they do manage to fuse the technologies seamlessly hopefully then it should make for a pretty impressive experience that is as stated if they don't go down the crap route (laughs) yes uh anyway so we've asked everybody their opinions about the ar uh, and vr technology all except for you count how do you feel about this sexual feelings um (laughs) Um, VR is a very interesting concept and when when it was first announced I thought it was going to go the way of 3D with movies and it was just going to be a sort of here here now gone in a couple of years kind of thing because remember 3D in movies has basically disappeared again but now that it's out and it's actually having things developed for it, I think that while VR isn't going to be the future of gaming, <laughs> I think that it is certainly going to be a very popular niche in gaming. Like yeah, I think not, it's going to be It's like not going to be the mainstream, but it's going to be like gaming. a really sort of big fringe thing. Yeah. And I think that's the way it's going to go. And I think the AR stuff isn't tested enough yet because I mean the only thing we've really seen of anything like this is that like the the whole Hololens thing, yeah. uh, three a year or two ago when they did the Hololens Minecraft, which let's be honest did look amazing. Oh yeah, that seems like a prototype for this thing. Exactly, and I just. I'm excited to see what they do with it. If they, there's, they've got the opportunity to make something very interesting with AR, because you could be like walking down the street and oh my god, there's a bear! But that's probably not going to happen. 
<laughs> yeah. That that would be one of the downfalls of augmented reality. If somebody were to hack your uh your headset and made you see shit. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my god, the streets covered in shit. What's happening? <laughs> well, yes, literally. <laughs> or so, uh, yeah. ooh, so, so I one, just thought of something. Someone threw away mm. loads of copies of Aliens Colonial Marines onto the floor. Okay, oh, here he goes again. Throw in shade at a shit game. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the perils. One of the perils of augmented reality. I think if we aliens colonial our, marines way. being thrown at you. Well, yes, probably. Um, but no, one of the other one of the other uh, pitfalls I, I can imagine is if it makes its way into our everyday lives. Uh, for example, just something as simple as a GPS. If it gets hacked, well, I mean, technically that says that remains true for nowadays anyway. But if somebody were to hack your headset and makes you go the wrong way, off a cliff, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you wouldn't like see the cliff. I always find that hilarious because you see these stories every time. Uh, my sat nav drove me into a lake. It's like no, you drove yourself <laughs> into a lake. Your sat nav <laughs> happened to get it wrong, and you blindly <laughs> obeyed it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> AR. Is a promising concept, but it's not proven yet, so we'll see. But the whole VR thing is very interesting. I'd like to see it become more accessible in the future. Yep. Agreed. And I think it's well on its path to becoming that. It is. It really is, and it's very exciting. And I want to vibe now, please. <laughs> Ditto. Uh... So that's it for this episode of the Gamecast Newscast. I'd like to thank our guest, Dave, for joining us. Oh, it was a pleasure. <laughs> I'd like to also thank my co-host, Fox. Anything for you, baby. Um... <laughs> <laughs> um... I I'd also like to thank my co-host, Max. Hit on him, hit on him, do it. Oh, no, I'm actually fucking mad at him this time because he always does me first and you even made a point about that and he fucking ignored it this time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to hit on him. I'm mad at him. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand on the other side of the room and not talk to him for an hour and be passive aggressive. <laughs> I can't breathe. I'm dying. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> fucking crying. So Dave, where can you be found? I can be found on Twitter at xxdaveacexx, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> oh, it's, it's like you, like you I jumped mean, out of the mid 2000s Unless you want to, um, you know, <laughs> check out <laughs> my articles <laughs> on early access game. <laughs> um, uh, is that some sort of plugging I hear there? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, Dave can be found over at Early Access Gaming, writing articles and whatnot, and he can be found on his Twitter. Max, where can you be found on the internet? There you go. Um, I can be found pretty much anywhere <laughs> on the internet under uh, Maximal, M-A-X-E-M-O-L-E. -E. Twitter is the best place to find me, but you can also talk to me on the, dis on the Gamecast Discord server. I'm easily accessible on there as well. And Vox, where can you be found on the internet? Oh boy, where can I be found? You can find me on YouTube at The Voice 106.7. You can also find me on Twitter at The Voice 106 underscore 7. You can find me on Vidme at The Voice 106.7. You can find me on the Discord, usually here with the news team. I'm being held hostage against my will. Please, somebody save me. This is not a joke. Um, <clears throat> you can also find me now on uh, Steam It, uh, this little. Uh, magnet chain block thingy. It's an experimental thing. It's an up and coming new video platform. I don't know. You can also find me there. Maybe somehow the thing's barely functional, but hopefully it'll work someday. <laughs> you really said yeah, it. that's where you can find me. <laughs> I know I, I am. I'm, I'm amazing at this. Uh. Yeah, definitely. And finally me, I can be found. I'm not even going to publicize my YouTube channel at the moment because there's no point. And I can be found on Twitch at Metal Nerd Dude. I can be found on Twitter at Snowy Duffield. I can be found on the Gamecast Discord and just doing the news on Gamecast. And that's pretty much it, I think. That's where we can all be found. 
And yes, I hope you all enjoyed listening, watching to this Gamecast newscast. And we will hopefully see you next time for some more rambly, rambly news. So say goodbye, oh, everybody. Dear. Goodbye. Bye, everybody.